So the boss came up to me and said, hey, Don, I uh, need you to grind these. And I said, okay, boss, what do we got? And he said, we got 16 of these pieces. I said, oh. So I said, all right, great. Next thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do, rather, is I'm going to go over and I'm going to lap the centers. And we're going to use this type of a center, which is kind of a half center, so we can get the wheel off if we're going to do this small diameter. We would want this kind of center. And I need to talk about job management because I think that's really important. If I'm going to lap these centers, here's one way I wouldn't do it. Let me go lap this one. I'm lapping. I'm lapping. All right. I got that one done. Next. I'm lapping. Here I go. Lapping. And so forth. That doesn't make any sense. Take all the parts, put them next to the lapping machine, lap them at one time and bring them back. We're going to apply the same concept to the OD grinder. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to manage the job appropriately. Now, if I were going to grind all three diameters, here's the way I would do it to prevent some warping, or out of round condition rather. I would rough this in within a thousandths. I would finish this side, finish this side, and go back and finish this. I'm talking about grinding within a couple of tenths. That's the way I would do it. Also, management on a machine, that's critical because you can save a lot of time and a lot of energy and make it fun by doing it a certain way. What is that certain way? Make it smarter. Example, two dogs, one on the machine running, another dog on the part while that's running, a drop of oil on either side, all ready to go while the machine's running. If, it's, if you have an automatic machine, it's important that you do that. It saves a lot of time and it's a lot of fun. And I'll bet you you could knock 50% of your time off if you did it that way. But we're going to talk about grinding the OD fast and accurately. Remember, Glenn, when we did that with the surface grinder? Sure do. We're going to do the same thing with the OD grinder. We're going to just come in here and take one major cut and then come in and take a finish cut after we get our taper out. So, again, we're going to plunge it in rather than take a thousands at a time and a thousands and a thousands, which takes forever. So let's go out back and I'll show you exactly how we're going to do it. Let's take a walk back there. This is the center that we're going to use on the tailstock. It has a clearance for the wheel, but it's got this flat could cause a problem with the centers. If the center is not lapped and there's a burr in there, every time you go around the flat spot, it's going to clunk, and guess what that's going to do? It's going to cause your part to be out around. You don't want it to be out around. That's not good. So make sure that the centers are lapped. Make sure you put a little bit of lubricant in it. We're going to put it on the OD grinder. We're going to show you how it works. So we're all set up, Glenn. I'm going to feed this in. By the way, I loved, when I was a kid, I used to run an OD grinder amongst other grinders, and this was one of my favorite. I always like running an OD grinder. To me, it was an opportunity to make pretty looking parts, bring them into size. Speaking of size, where are you? There we go. All right, so. I can see where we are. I know we need to take off about 20,000. So I'm going to feed in 20,000. I'm going to take actually I'm going to feed in about 17. There's one, two, three, four. And we really don't want to feed in 17 because we're taking it off on two sides, right? So we'll stop right there and watch this. Remember we talked about grinding fast and accurate? Now, you're going to get some controversy. Guys are going to say, well, the part will warp and it'll go out around and all that stuff. That's true in some cases. It's not going to be true here. Believe me, I've done enough of this that I know. So we're taking all off. Remember, the edge of the wheel is cutting, just like it does on the surface grinder. We're letting the edge of the wheel do the cutting. 
because that's where the action is. The rest of the wheel just drags behind and cleans it up. We'll take a quick look when I'm done here and see how much stock is left. You hear it starting to chatter a little bit. That doesn't hurt anything. That's just the wheel breaking down as it cuts. You're hearing an interrupted cut because there's a screw hole in there. And we're running through the screw hole, which doesn't hurt a thing. But you can take one pass, take majority of the stock off, and go back and take another pass and finish it up. Or maybe two passes, you know, it just depends. Again, we've already gotten the taper out of the machine, so we know that's good. Now, if I were going to do, if I were going to completely finish this, I would have this roughed in the way it is, and I would go in and do these smaller diameters next, and then come back in and finish it. But this is a demonstration, and it's not necessary for me to do that because of it. So we'll feed in just a little bit, and take one more pass. You can see by the sparks, we're not taking hardly anything off. I call that counting sparks. We're probably taking three, four tenths, that's it. So we're done here, we'll take the mic and we'll give it a check and see how much stock we have left and take our finish pass if necessary. And I like to pull a little bit right at the end so it doesn't wash. Believe it or not, that'll bend just enough to stop that wheel from dragging off. We have a slight taper in there of about three or four tenths. So I'm going to get that out of here by cranking on our wheel. You can see the indicator there, Glenn. I'm going to move that about 5,000 in. Okay. I was talking about watching it, watch the sparks. See how it's starting to wipe it clean? Another way to do that is by putting a pencil mark on there. You can use red crayon, but I don't like that because it tends to load up the wheel. Again, when I get near the end, I like to pull it, pull the tailstock away. Otherwise, it'll leave a trail at the end. So. I fed in just a little bit to get the uh, to get it to size, and we are right there. So that's one way to grind on the OD grinder, fast and accurate. Take a couple of passes. Take one major pass. Take all the stock off on the first pass. And again, this is not true with everything. It depends on what you're grinding. In this particular case, we can do it that way. I would have. To, to do this whole thing, if, if this has to be ground at this end, I would rough this in, grind these two ends, come back and grind the OD and finish it. That's the way I would do it. But for the purpose of demonstration, to give you an idea about how you can take a couple of passes and complete your size, that's why I did it this way. And this is one way to do it. Fast and accurate on the OD grinder. Thanks for watching.